about what um, God is doing. Let's just keep it real and keep it frank. Yes. Deliverance, and, with, and that's our topic for this week. Amen. Deliverance, it's required. Yes. What, what, what am I saying? I'm saying that in order for us to truly fulfill what we have to fulfill, mm -hmm. we have to go through a deliverance process. Mm -hmm. And for as deep folks just think that we only have one thing to be delivered from, that's not the case. Amen. This is a constant thing that we have to go mm -hmm. through. I'm so Amen. thankful and humble that God allowed us to work through a process Amen. and not give up. This is why deliverance requires God's love, mercy, uh -huh. and most Amen. importantly, his grace. Yes. Yes. Do you see yes. where I'm coming from? Amen. Uh, my topic, Independence Day. Amen. Independence Day. All month, Epic um, is spending time talking through uh, how to be delivered, what is necessary to be, to be delivered. And then towards the end of the month, you'll see us talk about very specifically how do you stay delivered. The reality Amen. of it is the enemy will not stop his plan right, right. because you're saved and you believe Jesus um, is your redeemer. Amen. He will, in fact, come against you even more. Yes. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. And so if we miss, and this is even for the kids now, um, if we miss the plan, we have nothing to execute. Right. We have. No, let me say it again. If we miss the plan, we have nothing to execute. And what happens is we think we got something and we just end up just walking right. and not doing anything. Amen. And then we're afraid in the spirit mm -hmm. to do a whole bunch and then we get beat up in the natural. Amen. Okay, so last month we talked about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to re-preach that. Go back to the YouTube videos. I need that to really get up in our spirit mm -hmm. because if you don't understand spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. we will not understand the deliverance process. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, let's 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 turn to some scriptures. I am a bit more ready than the man in the moon, but I tell you, I'm prepared. <laughs> I'm <laughs> prepared. Just bear with me here as I pull up my notes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if we can get the camera to come down just a bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. We're going to talk about strongholds. I'm going to give you a topic today um, because I want you, to, I want this to resonate in your spirit. Mm -hmm. We're going to break strongholds, but build your victory. Amen. I say it again: break your strongholds, and we're going to build your victory. Mm -hmm. When you're breaking something, it will require something else to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Right. So strongholds, which want to keep you broken, things that holding you down, evangelists, mm -hmm. things that's just, just breaking your spirits, mm -hmm. Elder, mm -hmm. Brother Brown, things that's just distorting your view on things, mm -hmm. kids, things that just keep you not focused on what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. When you begin to build your victory, mm -hmm. you're saying, I'm going to be an overcomer of these yeah. things. Mm -hmm. I'm in my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I have a reason to rejoice. Amen. And we have to understand mm -hmm. that all of that takes place in deliverance. Amen, amen. I've said it. I will yeah. say it every time I get before you this month. Freedom is a choice. Yes, sir. You simply have to decide, I'm going to be yes. free. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And then instantly that happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. The process of that is this deliverance. Amen. And God is the process. Oh. Living principle one. Living principles, if this is new for you, epic. We will always give you a good worship. We're going to give you a good praise. But, you know, we understand where God is, who he is, and the position he holds. Now, living principles allow you to leave our company and apply tactical, straightforward approach to change your life. Right. Amen. So the kids can understand it. Grown folks can understand it. Half senile old people can understand it. It's just simply understanding, here's what I need to do. Amen. Living principle one. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. I need you to understand that you cannot be deceived. What is deceived? Deceives will, being deceived allow you to see something that's really not there. Mm -hmm. Deception, the act of you seeing something that's not there. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, the enemy when, when you're uh, being deceived, he has to paint 
and give you uh, mirrors and smoke stream, streams. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're kind of confused at what's happening. But when I tell you that you can't be deceived, don't be deceived. I'm telling you to stay clear on what the purpose is. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it tactical, practical. If you know you're working through something and the enemy tells you in your mind that you can't do it, that's the first step in deception. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, in my mind, I think I can do it. Then God, I mean, the enemy would send people in your ear. Tell me, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. you, you think we should do that, Zaire? Elder, really want to do that? Mm. That's how you get it. Mm -hmm. You got to understand it. <coughs> you know, people will put it in your ear that way. Uh -huh. When you need, when the enemy's trying to deceive you, he has to place doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been drinking for 30 years. What do you mean you're going to get delivered now? You're 50 some years old. Mm -hmm. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. What? You say you're going to hold your body as a temple to Christ? Well, you've been at this thing and, can, and doing it pretty good for a long time. <coughs> you're going to close shop? Understand, that is how the enemy will make you think. Now, it's all you if you go for it. Why? Right. Oftentimes, the enemy will just set the playing field mm -hmm. and let you do all the damage. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true. Example, we pull on that pass. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We think of all of our mistakes. Mm -hmm. We have to feel guilty. That is how he gets you to stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's turn. Let me give you scripture. James 1, <laughs> 22. The book of James is my personal favorite. James 1, 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm going to break that down. But be ye doers of the word. That is, once you begin to allow God to engage your spirit, mm -hmm. and, and, and he's giving you instructions, or you're seeking him through his word, these are the things that won't change. His word will not change. Right. Okay. But he's not going to require you just to hear them, right. read them, see them, even feel them. He's going to require you to do them. Yes. Yes. I have to say it, and I've said it time and time again. We've got to get to a place. We've got to get to a place that we're not afraid to act. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you now, you can talk about it and pray about deliverance all day long, but when you don't act, mm -hmm. nothing will happen. Amen. Nothing will happen. I'll never forget the story I'm going to share with you. I was at a revival um, in my teen years. Um, and bless her heart, this lady would go to the altar every Sunday, including that um, revival, to rededicate her life, life over and over again to God. Mm -hmm. So finally the preacher said, I'm sorry. You up here every week rededicating your life. <laughs> so what you doing the other six days? Mm. Let's break that cycle. Mm -hmm. Y'all, you don't really care. Uh, I say that different day, different time, different day. But the fact that she never realized I can't keep rededicating that something I'm dedicating mm -hmm. to God over and over again, I simply have to begin to repent and believe that that foundation of salvation haven't been tampered with. Amen. So the enemy was playing with her saying, fill off the horse again. You no longer, you no longer have salvation. He's no longer there. Go back on, you know, on the altar every Sunday. And so imagine the guilt that that woman would feel every time she sinned. Now the pastor who told her, why are you coming up here every week? He'd be sinning. Right. It's just the reality of it. We all need to continue to go through the process, and none of us are perfect. Right, I'm just sir. really, I just want to keep it that way. So when you feel like you cannot do something, that is of the enemy. Do not be deceived. Not only do you need to hear God's word, but you need to do it. And when you don't do it, you are opening up the door for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc on your life. And if he should come, start that process again. Your salvation, your foundation is not tampered with. 
It is merely you getting into action to do God's word. Mm -hmm. I love what the scripture says after the comma. Mm -hmm. Deceiving your own selves. Mm -hmm. This is, goes back to the point I said when the enemy will set the ground for you to do the hard work wow. all alone. Wow. You know how to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so funny to me when I'm in counseling sessions or I'm talking to someone and they tell me this devil done did something. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk, spent the whole time telling me the story of what they did. <laughs> I sometimes have to say I haven't seen the devil yet. You did it. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that when we do God's word, the enemy gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And guess what, folks? Your deliverance process is in play at that point. Mm -hmm. Do you see where I'm coming from? Your deliverance process is in play. Because he gets weaker and weaker. And when the enemy is getting weaker, that means you are overcoming. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You are overcoming. Living principle two. What's living principle one? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. I just really need you to get that. That's why it's the first living principle today. Because everything I say after that, if you're deceived, you ain't gonna believe nothing I say no way. Right? Okay, so living principle two. Know your worth in Christ. When people say, I'm just not worthy of your blessings, that's a lie. Yeah, that's not scripture. It sounds good. I know it sounds good. They walk around with their lips pulled down. It sounds so good to say, Father, I'm not even worthy like you've been just so blessed. But God has has made you and loves you enough, mm -hmm. put you in put us in our own in his image mm -hmm. and his likeness. Yes. Why wouldn't he bless us? Right. He's called us to live a life and live it more abundantly. Uh -huh. So why wouldn't he bless us? We are worthy right. of God's blessings. Right. Now here's the thing. We have to be great examples and good stewards sure. of those blessings. Right. And what does this have to do with deliverance, you may ask, okay? What does this have to do with deliverance? If you believe that God loves you enough to bless you, mm -hmm. you'll believe that God loves you enough to get you through your issue. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah? Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> so if you're worthy, and if you know you're worthy, Every lie that the devil will tell you that you're not worthy mm -hmm. won't root on anything. It'll mm -hmm. fall on rocky soil. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that you're worthy, okay? You're loved because of God's grace and mercy. Now, here's something that's critical. You have to protect your mind. Jot that down. It's important to know. Kids, I want you to remember this. Jot, jot it down. Remember, if you don't got no pen and paper, protect your mind. If you begin to change what you think about something, mm -hmm. it will root in your spirit. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? If you feel like you can't do something, you won't. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're not good enough, you aren't. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're not adequate, you are indeed inadequate. Mm -hmm. And you simply have to think it. Once you begin to think it, it manifests itself. Amen. Now, this happens to me every time I think I'm going to sin. In my mind, you can't sin, y'all. But the day I had some confidence, I, re I recorded Rejoice. Mm -hmm. That made the album. You see where I'm coming from? I had a little confidence that day. But what I thought in my head, I can do this, mm -hmm. it came out. Now, I just recorded a song last week that I'm going to go back in and just exhort. <laughs> called Worsh uh, We Worship You. While in the studio, I didn't think it was coming out right. I just heard the take of it. It didn't turn out right. <laughs> Did you see where I'm coming from? So what I believe manifested itself. Now, let's talk about it in serious terms. In our everyday life, if we begin to doubt what God has for us, then we would never execute and operate on a level of faith no, no, no. that's going to be required. Do you understand? Do you understand? We have to get our minds to line up with the spirit. The mind has to line up with the spirit. And then everything will come into play. 
Okay, so let me give you another point. So protect your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't give your attention to foolishness, mm -hmm. hurtful people, or your past. Foolishness. A big old umbrella can fall under that. That can mean anything from yourself, people, situations. You choose what you're going to give your attention to. Mm -hmm. And if you spend all your time giving your attention to things that is the that are depleting you, right. then what are you giving your attention to that should be building mm -hmm. you up? Mm -hmm. I just want you to think about what is important right now. Uh -huh. Right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking, not deliverance process. So we know what the end goal. That no longer will plague you, whatever that is, mm -hmm. deliverance. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to figure out what do I need to do right mm -hmm. now to keep this process going. So I won't have time to give my attention to foolishness. Amen. I won't give my time and my love and my affection to people who are depleting mm -hmm. things from me. And then finally, I have to leave my past in a place where I have accepted it, I am resolved with it, and it has no light in my present, and certainly not my past. There you go. It cannot impact your future. Because you now have it in, in this past. Now, I've preached this before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. A lot of folks say, oh, no, you know, act like your past not there. You know, don't look back there. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You got to see it. Oh, yes. You got to understand it. And hear this. You even have to feel it. So that hurt, that shame, that sorrow, that grieving, the guilt, whatever it is that's plaguing you, even if you've been a victim, you can choose to say, I, it happened. I did it, they did it, whatever it was, and then put it in its place. Jesus. Something that you become resolved with can no longer hurt you. It can no longer hurt you. It can no longer hurt you. In your vulnerability is your strength. Vulnerability. In your vulnerability is your strength. That's why I tell folks, it's nothing you can tell about Charles Lee that he can't either co-sign on or tell you you lie. But you ain't gonna be able to shame you with it. That's for sure. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. People forget you say You don't. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Now I got scripture. Ephesians. <laughs> Second chapter. Fourth verse. Ephesians, another one of Paul's letters. I love it. He wrote it to the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what he was telling the Ephesians uh, is simple. Mm -hmm. Second chapter, fourth verse. But God, yes. who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, mm -hmm. even when we were dead in sin have quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus 8 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Last verse. Not of work. Lest any man should boast. I'm going to read the last two. Mm -hmm. For by grace are ye saved through faith that not are, uh, and that not of yourself. Mm -hmm. It is the gift of God not of works mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. Bottom line. He gave us a redeemer. Yes, he he gave us a savior so that we might understand when he applies his mercy mm -hmm. and his grace, that it has nothing to do with our own might, that yeah. we're simply standing on his word, yes. we're standing on his grace, uh -huh. we're standing on his mercy, mm -hmm. and it is not about ourselves, and therefore we should not be cocky yes. in the spirit, therefore <laughs> boast. Yes. We should understand that we are just weak vessels in yeah. the presence of yeah. the Almighty, yeah. and he yeah. is the process, on, he yeah. is the deliverer, yes. and more yes. importantly, he is the Savior. Yes. Now, I try to tell you, 
when you've gone through something mm -hmm. and you're determined to make it through, mm -hmm. then you begin to look at your situation differently. Yeah. This is why spiritual warfare is so important. Mm -hmm. Because it's no, it's, it'll be time out for you to try to fight things in the natural. You'll find yourself exhausted. Mm -hmm. Not able to do anything. You'll be so tired in the natural, you can't even war in the spirit. Mm -hmm. right. right. But when you choose to put your focus on God and say, God, I'm going to stand on what you told me in Ephesians mm -hmm. 2. Where you told me that because you are rich in mercy, mm -hmm. that I can overcome anything because you loved me. Mm -hmm. And I just simply have to believe that Jesus Christ, who's the Redeemer yes, and the sir. Savior, has already paved the way. And in that, I hold my salvation. Mm -hmm. I am already free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You simply have to believe it. You have to believe it. And that word that comes up again called faith mm -hmm. is why it is so important. That yes, leads sir. us to our final Living principle. Make a move. That's it. Living principle three. Make a move. Now we talked about don't be deceived. That's living principle one. Living principle two is know your worth in Christ. Do not be deceived and know your worth in Christ. And finally, make a move. Do something. Stop walking around here playing victim and and talk about how life is beating you up and you're never doing it better and you're this and you're that. You need to speak about yourself positively and do something do it. about do it. it. Yes. Period. Yep. Put your faith and align it with your action. Mm -hmm. And in that, your deliverance process would just shoot forward. I'm going to give you scripture. James 2. James 2, it's only four verses here, 14 to 17. What doth it profit, my brethren, yeah. though a man say he have faith mm -hmm. and have not works? James is making that a question. Uh -huh. he's, he's blank stares, as I like to say. Yeah. You mean to tell me, you say you got all this faith mm -hmm. and you ain't doing nothing? Nothing, nothing. Can faith save him? Yeah, These are questions. Mm -hmm. Go on to 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, mm -hmm. Depart in peace, but ye warmed and filled, mm -hmm. notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, mm -hmm. what do the prophet? Mm -hmm. Even so faith, if it have no birth, is mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. Being alone. alone. Wow. I'm going to tell you something that sounds real deep and it may not be what you've heard in the pulpit before. Faith doesn't operate alone. Mm -hmm. I love it. Faith cannot, cannot sir. operate yes. by wow. itself. Wow. Faith is merely the foundation to get things to happen. Uh -huh. What needs to happen? Action! Action. Parents, if your kid's bad, I'm just going to tell you. The only person you can look at is you. Get up in that tail. I'm giving you some good stuff. Follow me. Get up in that tail. Have conversation. Reinforce love. Require respect. Yes, sir. And you should just feel your home. Your, your, it should be so much love there that when you have to correct, mm -hmm. it don't turn the house upside down. Because I love you so. It's just how our Father does us. Yeah, loves us. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Right, God loves us. Mm -hmm. So yes, when we sir. get corrected, we can't do nothing but say, God, I got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's the same thing. It's not just that. I'm going to talk about a, a, a few other mm -hmm. things here. When things are going crazy in your life, there's a big indicator that there's a loss of control. I'm not just talking about family. You have to look at this thing in a number of ways. You have to look at your job. You have to look at uh, maybe how you feel about yourself, mm -hmm. how you feel about others, relationships that you need to mend, situations you need to close, mm -hmm. things that need to be restored in you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You have to look at yourself, yourself to understand what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, your action will be weak. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for the, some of us to say, okay, I got it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a step. Boom. You take your step. Oh, that, uh, I didn't expect this. 
Then you just stop doing anything. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking another year or two down the road where you, that, where you make that one step mm -hmm. and haven't done anything else. But you keep saying that you have the faith. So, as James is saying, if you have the faith and you ain't doing anything, what sense does that make? Right. The number one strategy in your deliverance process is doing something about it. How long can you talk about how bad you are, things you need to work through, what things have beat you up, what has taken your mind, what has depressed your spirit, and you're not doing anything about it. Depression is a spirit. Feeling like you're not good enough is a spirit. Seeking these natural things like alcohol, substance abuse, those things are spirits to make you go to those uh -huh. things. Understand that you have the power in Christ Jesus to overcome all of those things yeah. and that it shall not overtake you once you make the choice to do something about it. So I'm telling the folks today, don't be deceived yes, and know your work in Christ and for goodness sake, if not for yourself, do it for me perhaps. Mm -hmm. Do something. Right. Make a move. Right. If you believe that today, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. At you stream. Touch the phone, touch the computer. Stand to your feet if you believe that you are an overcomer. Stand to your feet if you believe that what God promised you is going to come to pass. Yes, sir. Come and stand to your feet and stand on it. I'm trying to get you to see this is perfect. This is what we missed. When I'm asking you to stand, I'm not telling you to give me any glory. I'm still staying seated for a reason. But you're standing on the promise. You're standing on the purpose. Yes, sir. And if you believe that these things are going to come to pass, you're standing on it right now. Look at your feet and realize I am standing on my purpose. Yes, Lord. I will not be deceived. God, I am worth it. And most importantly, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to make a move. At this point, lift your hand and give your own worship. Yes, tonight. Yes. Thank you, God, for everything, God, that was spoken to the hearts and the minds yes, of your people tonight. Yes. Father, I pray, God, that we will take this word, God, mm -hmm. and apply it yes. to our lives. Mm -hmm. God, help us even the more to understand who it is that you called us to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. God, cause us not to be deceived. Yes. God, cause us to better understand and to know our worth in you. Yes. And Father, give us Give us enough of sense mm -hmm. to understand that we have to make a move. Yes, sir. We have to do something that requires us to be mobile. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we thank you, God. As we close this portion of our service, God, we pray tonight, God. I believe, God, that your word has settled in the hearts and the minds of your people. Hallelujah. God, keep us in a place with you, Father. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We just close out this portion, part of our service. We want to say thank you for coming and being a part of this worship experience. Meet us again on Sunday at 11 o'clock where we will have our encounter. On Wednesday night again where we have life nights where we get our lives through the word of God. Amen. Amen. Also remember that we're continuing our 6 o'clock prayer every day this week. So please tune in. Amen. Amen. Love you guys and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you.